Look, I'm a little afraid to address that trauma in my life. Like, I don't really want to go there. What's up, y'all? Oh, man, I love this topic today because a lot of times as we get older in life, whether you're in your teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, and especially like when you become adult, once you become an adult, right, you've experienced some sort of life happen, right? Like you've spent, experienced highs and lows, but you've had some sort of life happen to you. And like, we all had our lows, right? And because we've all had our lows, we all respond to it differently, right? Some of us experience hard, low moments in our lives, right? Experience or go a lot, some of us go through things. A lot of us go through things in life and we all respond two different ways. Some of us, you know, heal from it, um, go through the healing process, work on it and be healed in that area and move forward, right? And then some of us, what a, a lot of us do, we go through we go through something, right? And that really affected us. And since it affected us so much, we like to put a mask over it. We put a mask over it and we just learn to cope with it. We just kind of learn to cope with it. And we just kind of go about life putting a mask on it, right? And we just, we like suppress it. We just like don't acknowledge it. And it's like this big ugly thing. Like it's this big ugly thing in our life, right? And we just kind of like, despite how ugly it is, right? We just, we just kind of go around it, right? We just, just don't acknowledge it. It's like a big ugly stain on a white couch, right? Like it's noticeable right there, but because I don't want to clean it, because the cleaning process can be hard and strenuous, or I don't feel like doing it, I'd rather not just go through like the cleaning process of getting this stain, ugly stain out, out of my couch. I'ma just learn to deal with it. I'ma put a blanket over it. I'ma just sit around it. or Maybe I'm, you know, uh, just not acknowledge it. And that's what I want to talk about. Like, that's a problem. That is really a problem. And somebody talked about mental health issues. And um, um, I think we should, like, talk about that, right? Like, just mental health issues in the Christian community or even just in this world, right? A lot of us, and I got a scripture where this comes from. And that's a scripture what it's derived from. But a lot of us are dealing with things, right? That could be feelings of rejection. We, we might have been rejected. We might be dealing with depression, dealing with fear, right? We might be dealing with fear out of like, cause out of our childhood, we had like a, a scarcity mindset, right? We might be fearful of something that happened in the past. Something might've happened in the past, so now we're dealing with fear, right? The struggles that we're going through, battling with addictions, old habits that we just can't kick, uh, suicidal thoughts, right? Insecurity, somebody told us something when we were younger or um, we, you know, or we feel insecure about a certain thing or we compare ourselves to others and we don't feel like we're enough. All those feelings, right? Like we, a lot of us times we know we have that. Like a lot of us know we're dealing with that and like we just don't talk about it. And like that's the issue. That is a huge issue because like I said, it's, we don't want to talk about it. And the reason we don't want to talk about it because it can be painful, right? And that's in the Christian community, that is in the world. I think mental health is such a big thing right now because we just don't, not, I don't even want to say not even the fact that we don't want to deal with our issues. No, we don't, we don't know that we have issues. I don't want to say that. It's, we know we have an issue, right? We don't want to face it. Why don't we want to face our issues, Ross? We don't want to face our issues because facing our issues is hard. It is fearful. It is scary. It requires work. It's not something that is just done overnight. You don't know when, how long it may take to be healed. And because I don't know like how long this journey could be, it could be, I could be healed overnight. It may take me a few months or, you know, a few couple of seasons, however long to, or to receive healing. We don't know how long it's going to take. And we know it's gonna be a long, hard, emotional, uncomfortable season. And I know like, man, digging up some old things from the past can be hard because you gotta relive those moments. And it can be hard, right? For example, if, it, if someone, like a, someone who's been molested or sexually assaulted in the past, a lot of, a lot of times 
they'll just kind of go on with their life, right? Just kind of want to go on with their, with, with their lives and not address it. And the issue with that is that thing affects us. Like the things we go through affects our lives. Like, and we don't realize it, right? We don't realize it, right? So for example, if I, if I, if I deal, if I battle with insecurities because what I was told when I was younger, right? Now I have lack of confidence, right? I have self-esteem issues. So now I go on about life with self-esteem issues, right? So I get in relationships with self-esteem issues. I, I have in my friendships, I have self-esteem issues. How I interact with people, it comes up, it, it, peop, it's obvious that I have a low self-esteem, right? <laughs> or I'm gonna take another one, right? Uh, anxiety, right? I don't, I don't, a lot of us like anxiety, uh, anxiety is so large today because a lot of us are comparing our lives to other people, right? So let's say you're dealing with anxiety, right? <sighs> anxiety affects, affects how we go about life, right? As I, a lot of people who deal, who deal with anxiety may not want to go in public spaces, public spaces, right? They might not want to go around certain people or they might can't do certain things because they're dealing with anxiety, right? And instead of, instead of, you know, saying working through that anxiety, right? They just want, they, uh, they just choose to take the easier route and to take the easier route. And I understand it because it like, it makes sense, but they take, choose the easier route because like I said, it's, it's hard dealing with those things, right? And I just want to tell you guys, um, there's a scripture where it is a scripture. It says where the spirit of the Lord, where the Lord is, that's where his spirit is. And wherever the Lord's spirit is, there's freedom. So if you're dealing with anxiety, if you're dealing with depression, if you're dealing with, um, if you're a uh, trauma, um, suicidal thoughts, insecurities, oh, trying to break an old habit. If you're dealing with those things, the scripture says, Wherever the Lord is, that's where his spirit is. And wherever the spirit is, that's where his freedom. So if those are some, if there's some areas in your life, right? If there's some areas in your life that you're battling with these, these tra traumatic thoughts and rejections and struggles and bad habits, you have to invite the spirit of the Lord there. Like invite God there. Like don't try to hold on to it, right? Because if we try to, if we, don't allow the spirit if we don't allow god's spirit in our lives we can't have freedom in it because where there's where god is there's freedom so look if you have if, if that's you if you have some ugly some some things in your past some ugly things right that's that's plaguing you that's holding you back that's really keeping you from happiness invite god there right because if you invite god there when, wherever he is, he will set you free from that. Because like I said, God, God in bondage, like God knows that thing stuck to you, right? And God and bondage don't coexist. Like God is too, too powerful for this chain, for this, that chain in your life, that, that chain that's tugging you to anxiety, that chain that's tugging you to fear and to depression and to rejection. God is too strong for that. God can break that chain easily. But you have to invite God in that. So if you're if if you're suffering with things in your life, all you gotta do is invite God there. And the second you do that, then He can begin to start breaking those chains in your life. And no, it may not be the easiest easiest thing. No, it may not be you know the quickest thing, right? But it's worth it because, like I said, when you're when you're when you're living with anxiety, depression, fear, all those things. You're not living to your full potential. You're like living a shell of yourself, right? How can you, cause how can you be your full, how can you be your best self when you're depressed? How can you be your best self when you're dealing with anxiety? How can you be your best self if you're struggling with addiction? You can't, right? So instead of just learning how to cope with those things and just live with it, no. Invite God there so he can set you free from that. So you can be your best version of yourself. So you can experience true happiness and joy. And you can just see how good God is. Man, I love y'all. I'm signing out.